You know, I was thinking, if my shadow follows me everywhere, does that mean I technically have a pet made of darkness? Also, I was thinking, the best part about PC gaming is the flexibility. You can do all the tweaking and twerking of the hardware and the game settings to get them looking good and running how you like them. And the operating system. You can go with boring but practical Windows, or you can go with Linux, either one of the 78,000 flavors of desktop Linux, or a SteamOS Linux like Bazite. Speaking of which, Bazite is amazing. I made a video where I installed it on a mini PC, which basically turned it into a Steam game console. And at the end of that video, I said, at one point, I kissed it. Just once. For science. And then I also said, you know, now that I've done this experiment, I'm kind of left wondering why anyone would game on Windows, since SteamOS works so well. And it kind of felt like the games actually ran better, which was a confusing feeling. And I pushed it deep down with my other confusing feelings. You know, where it could fester. And now it's come to the surface once again, and it's haunting me. I can't concentrate. I can't sleep. I need to know once and for all. Do games run better on SteamOS compared to Windows? Do we get performance gains? And if so, how much? And is it worth making the switch? And if it is, then should we just do that by default? And if not, then why? The answer to all those questions is, well, I, I can't answer all those questions with, with just one answer. And it's not reasonable of you to expect me to. Let's begin as all things begin at the beginning. Why would you want to install SteamOS on a computer? I mean, computers usually have Windows on them, so why bother installing something that's not Windows to do things that Windows can do? And my answer to that is threefold. One, don't tell me what to do, you're not my mother. Two, Windows is a bloated mess with tons of extra software and services pre-installed and running in the background that have nothing to do with games, which might be causing the games to actually run worse. And we're going to talk about that. And three, SteamOS is freaking awesome. That's one of the main reasons everyone loves the Steam Deck so much. Bazite is the flavor of SteamOS that we're using today. It's a gaming first operating system that makes your computer feel like a gaming console with a built-in desktop mode if you want to use it like a computer. It's a double whammy. Our test subject today is this mini PC. It's the GMK Tech K11. This thing is a super cool little gaming focused mini PC. You can tell it's for gaming because it has RBG lights on there. This thing is rocking the Ryzen 9 8945HS APU with an integrated Radeon 780M GPU. We get 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5 RAM clocked at 5600 mega things per second, one terabyte of NVMe internal storage, and we get Wi-Fi 6, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, Bluetooth 5.2, and it's running Windows 11 Pro. One of the things that I love about GMK Tech Mini PCs, apart from that they look nice, is that they don't skimp on the I.O. All the holes you could ever want. And it has an Oculink hole for connecting up an external GPU, like the GMK Tech GP1 eGPU that I reviewed recently in this video. Link below. I'm not going to be using that today, but you can use one if you want to. And you can check out my review video if you want to know the difference that an eGPU makes. It comes with Windows installed, so we'll be fine there to test out some games on the stock system. But to get Bazite on a mini PC, we'll either have to flash Bazite onto the drive that's in there by overwriting Windows or doing some dual boot thing, or we could just flash Bazite onto another SSD and then we can swap it. That's what I did here. I made this video before where I did a fresh install of Bazite on a mini PC, and I'll link to that video below if you want to know how to do it. So I have a NVMe drive with Bazite ready to go, and that, that's, that's the plan. I'm going to run all my Windows benchmarks and then I'm just going to open this bad boy up and swap the drive, which is super easy to do. The top comes off with a little twist and then there's four screws in there and then you can access the drive right there. And then I'll boot to SteamOS on Bazite and run the same games at the same settings. And then we'll see once and for all the answer that we've been waiting for, which is better for games, SteamOS or Windows, the ultimate showdown. And we're going to figure it out together today, right now, actually starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Windows. Here I am at 1080p with the high settings, no resolution scale, and this is running really good, getting between 30 and 40 FPS most of the time. And we got 38 FPS average. And th there aren't many areas of slowdown and no big frame dips or inconsistency. But even still, it needs to be said, you're, you're not gonna get desktop level gaming performance from a mini PC. So some games will run great at higher settings, but on some you'll definitely need to take, de take down the settings and make some sacrifices. Moving over to Bazite, and this is the same settings, same resolution, but it's running better. Here we're getting between 38 and 45 FPS with an average of 42 FPS, which is promising for, for this video. 
because it would have been a boring video if they were, if they were the same. But there is a difference. Not a huge difference in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just 4 FPS difference, but it's enough that you can actually feel it. The game feels a little bit smoother, which is something. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is better on SteamOS by, by just a bit, but maybe some games will be more drastically different. But we'll see about that. Next up is Cyberjunk 2077 on Windows 11 first. This game is obviously super demanding, but uh, we were able to run at the medium preset uh, 1080p with balanced FSR, and it's it's playable like this. And this area that I'm in here, the, the cherry blossom market, this is a super demanding area. So most of the time we've got much better performance. And it looks like we're getting between 35 and 45 FPS, and uh, an average FPS of 40 FPS. And on average, the FPS is higher here than in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Windows, but this is a way more stuttery experience. It doesn't feel nearly as good. I don't know if you could tell in the video, you could, you could definitely tell in the frame time graph. There is lots of inconsistency and you can feel that when you're playing. It's still playable, but I'd probably lower the settings even more to get it running better. And here we are on SteamOS running with the same resolution and the same settings, but now we're getting substantially better performance. On Windows, we got 40 FPS with lots of stutters, but here on SteamOS, we're getting 53 FPS and basically zero stutters. That frame time graph is so smooth, it's basically a straight line. Zero frame dips and spikes. And even though we're only about 25% higher FPS, the game felt like it was more than double the FPS. It was such a better experience here playing this game on SteamOS. Like, sort of okay and barely playable on Windows to super smooth and genuinely enjoyable on SteamOS. And th that's what it really comes down to, how much how enjoyable it is to play. And now we have this lovely game, this fun, lighthearted, chill, cozy game that you play to unwind. It's Doom Eternal. Running at 1080p with the high preset, and it's running great, as you would expect. Depending on the area we're in, we're getting anywhere from 45 FPS up to 65 FPS. And the average was 55 FPS. And as you can see, the frame rate graph is super smooth, and the game felt super smooth too. I could easily play through the entire game like this and have a good time. Over on SteamOS though, things get interesting. Now we're getting between 55 and 75 FPS. Even some parts up to 80 FPS, with an average of 63 FPS. The frame time graph is smooth, just like on Windows, and we're getting more frames here, which is nice if you have a high refresh rate monitor, but I wouldn't say it's a night and day difference like how it was on Cyberpunk. It's definitely better, but it's good on Windows or SteamOS, really. Here we are in Assassin's Creed Shadows. 1080p, ray tracing set to high dode only, medium preset, and performance FSR, and the frame rate isn't great. <laughs> Getting around 28 FPS on average. It's not terrible. I'd actually say this is playable, and if you wanted to play, you could play it, and the, the game does look good like this. You can use frame gen to get this up to about 45 FPS, and it still works good. It looks pretty good, but I didn't want to use frame gen here because we're testing raw performance. And on Windows, it's just bare playable. Some slight up and down in the frame time graph, not super smooth or anything, but a little bit stuttery, but you could play it. And it, we could still go down to the low settings and end up with better performance too. On SteamOS, this was a little bit of a problem. The options menu had different settings. No detail settings here for some reason. I, and I'm pretty sure this is set on the high settings because uh, I could tell it looked better. But the rest of the settings, I tweaked wh what I could to make it match with FSR off and no frame gen. And that, that said, even though the game looks better because we're probably on higher settings, even still we got better performance here. We got 31 FPS on average compared to 28 before, but the look at the frame time graph. It's like perfectly flat. This fell way smoother on SteamOS compared to Windows. There's no question, Windows is doing something in the background that is causing performance issues, and we don't have to deal with that on SteamOS. Let's finish off with one of my favorite games, The Witcher 3. This is 1080p with balanced FSR, medium settings, and in Windows the game is running pretty good and it looks freaking awesome. I got 39 FPS on average like this. A little bit of up and down in the frame time graph and the game didn't feel perfectly smooth. You could tell there was a bit of inconsistency especially when you panned the camera, but yeah you can still play like this and have a good time. Over on SteamOS though it's a pretty drastic difference. Same settings but now I'm getting 56 FPS on average, which is a huge bump up from Windows, and the game feels so buttery smooth here. As you can see, the frame time graph is basically flat. Compared to Windows, this is a heck ton smoother and way more enjoyable, especially in the action sequences. That's where I feel the frame rate dips the most, and I'd much rather play this on SteamOS than on Windows. So where does all this leave us, you ask? Well, what's that? You didn't ask that? 
Well, too bad. That's what we're going to talk about anyway. So shut up, click the subscribe button, and let me tell you about this whole Windows versus SteamOS thing. I think it should be obvious by now that there is something about Windows that is impacting performance. Windows 11 comes with a ton of stuff installed, a ton of bloat. Not just a ton of apps and programs that you don't want or need, but also background processes. It's always trying to do stuff even when you're playing a game. And here I actually went through and disabled everything that I could. I did all the updates and turned off virus scanning. I installed OneDrive and Teams and all that bullcrap, disabled Copilot. And even still, Windows was just by its very nature preventing the games from accessing all the PC's resources to run as well as they could. Steam OS didn't have that problem, but I think because it's built to be a lightweight operating system without anything extra running while you're gaming. Bazite in particular is so well optimized for this sort of low power system and uh, it also has a desktop mode if you want to use it as a computer, but even the desktop mode is lightweight and efficient. And it's even more impressive if you consider that Linux uses a compatibility layer to handle some Windows APIs like DirectX or whatever, and that has a performance impact. And even still, SteamOS came out on top. And the thing that impacted the game experience the most wasn't the frame rate, but it was the frame time ups and downs. That inconsistent performance in Windows just made the, the games feel less smooth overall. None of the games that I tested in SteamOS had any of the wild frame time spikes that we were getting in Windows in a, in a few games. However, on Windows, you can run those games that don't run on SteamOS. You know, some games with anti-cheat don't run on SteamOS, like GTA Online and Fortnite, and games that are UWP games, like all the Microsoft Game Pass games. You, you don't get any of those on SteamOS. But I'd say that's a pretty small subsection of the PC games that people want to play. And if you don't care about that stuff, you could probably stick with SteamOS and have a great little consoleized PC. But even if you do care about Windows stuff, you can set up Bazite to dual boot and get the best of both worlds, switch between them whenever you want to. I'm going to leave this setup as a SteamOS PC and play me some PC games on it. But if you get something going like this, you can set it up the way you, you like. Just like everything with PC, there's lots of flexibility here. Also, let's do a quick little mini review of the GMK Tech K11 Mini PC. And it's really good. I mean, it's a Ryzen 9 8000 series based mini PC with 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5 RAM. So I was expecting it to do well, and it, it totally does, as you can see. But what I wasn't expecting was it to run so quiet. I've reviewed a ton of GMK Tech mini PCs over the years, and they've come a long way. This K11 is nice and quiet, and the last one I checked out, the Evo X1, that was also super quiet. Whatever GMK Tech is doing with their fan tech, it's working. I mean, it's, it's not perfect. I like the way it looks, but I don't love it. And you can't turn off the RBG on the fan. So if you don't like the RBG, then you're going to have to do something about that to, to cover it up. Yeah, but maybe put a sticker over top or something. And as always, I wish we had an Oculink port and a USB-C port around the back of the PC because plugging in things in the front kind of kills the clean desk aesthetic. But yeah, if you want an awesome Ryzen 9 powered mini PC, this is a great choice. You can buy this mini PC in several configurations and they're all available on Amazon so you won't have to deal with tariff stuff. And I'll include some links in the description below if you want to pick one of these up. And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this useful or at least entertaining. I certainly enjoy getting an answer to this. It's something that I've been wondering about and this video kind of confirmed my presumptions or maybe it affirmed my assumptions, which I, whichever of those makes the most sense. But that's it. That's all I have for you today. Click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. That's it from me. I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.